with everything from new models to retro reboots of classic bikes it's been a really good year for new bikes and motorcycle launches we've literally had it all from the reawakening of the behemoth in the rocket 3 to the most revolutionary and powerful honda fireblade to date and let's not forget everything in between So we've been trawling the page views on the Visor Down YouTube channel to figure out which new bike reviews you couldn't wait to see from the last year. Here's the top 10. One of the best bikes Visor Down had the pleasure of riding in 2019 was the baby sports bike from Honda. The 500cc parallel twin is perky and provides more thrills than a 47bhp motorcycle should. It handles sublimely, looks great, and can be pretty much ridden everywhere flat out. What is not to like? Updated for 2020, the Ninja 1000 SX gets sleeker bodywork, selectable riding modes and the best TFT dash on the market. And of course that Euro 5 compliant engine. We headed to Cordoba for the launch of this bike and found it to be a true all-rounder, falling short in almost no areas at all. Bikes like this are kind of becoming a little bit of a, a, a rarity. Manufacturers seem to be going for, instead of the proper sports tourer, they're going for the long-legged sports tourer, things like the Versus 1000, the Ducati Multistrada and so on and so forth. Uh, I just really think there is a place for bikes like this in the world of motorcycling. They deliver a, a, a very specific kind of handling characteristic that you don't get with one of those lanky, long-legged, uh, tall, sort of pseudo adventure sports touring motorcycles um, if you're going to be covering long distances and you want to do it at high speed this is the kind of intercontinental ballistic missile that you need to be looking at it's long it's low it's sleek it gets good fuel economy it's got a big fuel tank and it is supremely comfortable and bloody quick you can't really go wrong with a bike like this the star of the show on the three bike 500cc Honda launch, which included the CB500F and CBR500R, was the adventure off road inspired CB500X midway adventure bike. The A2 friendly machine was one that really stole our hearts, with new bodywork, revised suspension, and an off road spec 19 inch front wheel. Whether it was a dreary morning commute or a Sunday green lane blast, this machine is more than up to the challenge. If you are looking for something a little bit different, do a bit of, do a bit of adventure riding on something a little less intimidating than you know, its bigger brother, the Africa Twin, then perhaps you should give this, this bike a go. The Z900 gets a ZH2 inspired makeover for 2020. It now has riding modes and a TFT dash that is easy to read day, night or even direct sunlight. With sporty handling and enough power to excite, the usable but not over the top 123bhp the Z900 provided us with all the thrills we needed from a naked bike without any of the knife edge dynamics of a 200bhp machine. The bike left such an impression on us, we've actually got one as our long-term visor down test bike. Stay tuned to the YouTube channel for more updates on that. It's bikes like this that make me wonder why there are 200 horsepower nakeds out there. I know having more power is fun and it's, you know, wheelies and excitement. But when you've got a bike that's got about 123, 124 horsepower and you've got a really, really twisty road and you've got suspension that is this good and you've got a chassis that is so balanced and so stable, it's just such a pleasure to be able to ride it up to sort of 95, 90% of what the bike can do. Whereas with a big 200 horsepower super naked, I'm probably never gonna get to 60 or 75% of what the bike's got to offer. And I, I really enjoy the fact that you can extract it all. I think the price point for it is really very good. Um, 
and I think the update to the styling for this year is is spot on. The the Z naked family is kind of all joined up now, and it looks really really nice. I, I I like the lineage, and you can sort of see the DNA of the Z model series all the way through, which is properly properly cool. Honda's CB650R gets a Neo Sports Cafe makeover for 2020, slotting almost into its own little niche in the middleweight naked sector. It may not be about to set anyone's hair on fire performance wise, but it is a sweet handling and looking machine that has styling like nothing else in the segment. This is available in the UK in dealers and the price for this is 6999, which I think is pretty good value i mean that's cheaper than a ktm 350 enduro bike it's accessible as well so we've got a low seat at 810 millimeters um it's light we're just a shade over 200 kilograms and it's got about 100 horsepower so if you have just passed your direct access your big bike test and you're looking for a stylish naked bike that you can ride every day and have fun on and learn the skills of riding a motorcycle i don't think you can go far wrong with this Surprisingly, for us anyway, the BMW C400 GT has snuck its way into this top 10 and it's the only scooter in here. Adam Child covered this launch for us and to sum it up he said if you're not perturbed by the price and want a premium attractive mid-size maxi scooter then look no further, you won't be disappointed. So to summarise, the GT is a premium maxi scooter in that middle class. It is above the competition from Suzuki and Yamaha and Kimco but you do have to pay for that premium price. If you're going to go for it, go for the top spec model, go for the heated grips, go for the heated seat and go for the TFT screen. Into an iconic name in 2019 with the return of the Yamaha Tenere to the UK's roads. Built around the Yamaha CP2 parallel twin cylinder engine, the Tenere 700 mixes Dakar styling and an everyday ease of use that makes it as popular with urban commuters as it does with true adventurists and globetrotters. Now I've had the very good fortune to ride it for about 350 miles both on and off road. I've asked it to do a lot of different things and it's just come up trumps each and every time. This is an adventure bike that works off road. It's not a pseudo adventure bike that just looks the part but starts to feel too heavy, too ungainly and too, too poorly suspended once you take it off road. This thing works. Now the surprising thing is, we were led to believe that it was an off-road focus bike and it would work in that environment, but I thought that would come at the cost of being poor on-road. But in the first ride to the first trails that we tried, it, it was immediately apparent that this is a very comfortable, easy-going, civilised bike offering a lot of protection that you could, I could have ridden it home back to the UK from that point and expected to get there in the most civilised and sophisticated fashion. With a Fireblader like makeover, the CBR650R had some big shoes to fill in 2020 as it picked up the rather sizeable hole left in the range by the departing CBR600RR. Granted, it's not as sporty as the race bred CBR, but it is supremely comfortable, much easier to ride, almost as quick given the right track and conditions. But this thing is, is you know, phenomenally quick and I've ridden sports bike thousands and six hundreds and, you know, I don't think I'd have been any quicker on the roads that we rode today on anything else. This is a really, really good tool. Big bikes don't come much bigger than the Triumph Rocket 3. Since the announcement that the bike was making a return to the lineup, many assumed the new machine would simply be a Euro 5 compliant restyle of the old bike. What we actually got was an all new motorcycle sharing no components with the previous model. And with 165 bhp and 163 pound foot of torque on offer, it definitely doesn't disappoint on the road either. 
One thing that's been a lot of chatter on social media from people talking about the price of this bike and the fact that it's a lot more than the original Rocket 3 was when it was built, but Triumph have had to put a lot of work in to develop it. It's not, like I said earlier on in the in the video, it's not a, it's not a rehash. They've not just spruced up the old Rocket 3. It's from the ground up, it is a brand new bike. Um, the other thing is when you compare it to the competition, the likes of the uh, Harley Davidson Fat Bob, the Ducati X Diavel, the Diavel 1260S, they're kind of all in and about the price range. And this is the only bike that offers this kind of excess in a way. All the others are V-twins and by comparison to this, they're fairly, fairly sort of normal in a way. After a tumultuous few years on road and track, the Honda Fireblade has gone through its most dramatic and extensive update since its release in 1992. For 2020, the blade makes over 200 bhp, it's dripping with electronics and even has aerodynamic wings that actually work, keeping the front wheel on the ground on the launch in Doha. Is it the ultimate track weapon? Very possibly. Is it the best option for fast road riding out there? We're going to have to wait and see. It's an absolute track weapon uh, in my eyes. I don't think I could have gone faster if I'd have had more horsepower. Comparing it to other sports bikes that are out there, BMW S1000RR, Panigale V4S um, and the Kawasaki ZX10R, it feels more raucous than the ZX10R. Uh, the ZX10R is kind of like this silky smooth, svelte, lovely thing to link between the turns and this thing is more of a handful than that but it's definitely, definitely so much easier to ride and so much less brutal than something like a V4S which just constantly wants to buck and weave and sort of chuck you about the place. It's still a fire blade, it still feels like a fire blade, but in my mind, it feels like a fire blade that's been into a race shop and had a whole load of trick track day goodies thrown at it. It's a, it's a very pleasurable bit of, uh, bit of kit. If you've liked that video, please don't forget to hit like, subscribe and click the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of Visor Down's latest videos. For the latest news, reviews and motorcycle features, please head over to visordown.com.